Ja. I want to talk today about transplanting these tomatoes again, or actually repotting them. The last click I did on the subject, uh, I had grabbed some Paul Robeson's seedlings and then changed my mind. I chickened out. Ordinarily I would have gone ahead, but because they were Paul Robeson's and I didn't have a lot of them, I didn't want to take any chances. So I decided then to allow them another week or two to mature a little more so that they could stand the rigors of repotting more safely. And uh, well, here they are. This particular pot has six seedlings in it. We're going to do that today, but for our purposes right now, we're short on time because uh, of time constraints with uh, YouTube. We'll do these, and as you can see, they're very ready. They need to be broken apart quickly and repotted. You don't want to just tear them apart if you can help it. I'm actually being a good deal rougher than is necessary. But uh, you don't have to be ultra gentle either. Though if you were worried about this you could wash the roots actually. But I did. So that repotting then is a snap. Once you make all your preps as I did, I just mixed this soil an hour ago and I got everything else lined up and everything goes very easily. This particular potting soil has no amendments in it other than perlite and sphagnum moss. It has the mark of 12 on it, but that's inaccurate. We're going to put a 1 on this. It will be safe for the time being because I have that tray started with other Paul Robesons in it, so I won't make a mistake there. So a little bit of wood chips, a little bit of soil, and we're off and running. As you can see, I'm just grabbing handfuls and throwing it in, so it's nothing scientific about this, just giving the transplants, or the seedlings I should say, an opportunity to mature to a state where they can actually handle the beating I'm giving them right now. You can see by the thickness of the stems that they're a lot safer to transplant today than they were a week or so ago. Set up as we are, you can actually transplant ten of these in less time than it takes most people to transplant two. And you can do so without really hurrying. And you notice I'm really burying these things. I'm burying them right up to its neck, you might say. And the reason being, for those of you who don't know, and I suspect many do, is that This tomato plant is not a plant, it's a vine, and as such, it will develop and grow roots all along the vine. 
So the deeper you plant it, the more roots you'll have. The more roots you have, the healthier plant, because it can then take in more nutrients and water than it would if it had a shallower, shallower planting. Well, here comes a little bit larger. I do not like to cut and trim my roots. A lot of guys do. I do not. Roots have a strange habit of going where they want to. They don't just stay curled up when you put them in like that. Part of it may, but the ends would continue to grow and go deep. So here we have another deeply pan planted vine seedling. I do something else I'll mention here I haven't mentioned before, and that is that I don't throw these when I pinch something off, I don't throw them away, I stick them in the dirt because they will respond and come back. So you got an extra plant. Extra seedling, I should say. Okay, we're going to do one more, then we're going to call it quits on this particular flick so that it doesn't take 17 hours for YouTube to tell me that my video is too large. So, all we have now is six more seedlings to transplant, and we're done for the day of fall work. I hope this answers some of the questions that keep arising on how to handle these transplants. Once you, once you allow them to have or gain enough girth, enough size, then uh, almost anything is possible. Hope this helps you out.